Hello and welcome back to the Miru project. Today I'm going to be creating a Creole language in just one hour. So first, what is a Creole? Well, a Creole language is formed when speakers of the substrate try to learn the superstrate. This produces a language with the grammar of the substrate but the lexicon of the more dominant language. But things aren't always this simple. Sometimes the speakers of the substrate will just continue speaking the substrate, whilst using the superstrate for more formal scenarios. It really depends on the situation. Before we begin, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you'll be notified when our next video comes out. So let's make some hypothetical people. These are people A, and they have just migrated to this island. And these are people B, the indigenous inhabitants of that island. People A need to learn people B's language as soon as possible so they can communicate. So let's start conlanging. For people A's language, I'll be using Latin. And for people B's language, I'll be using Colsil, the language I've been developing recently. Just to be clear, a pidgin is a language that forms when two different peoples mix their language to try and understand each other. However, a pidgin only becomes a creole once it has native speakers. Now let's begin. I'll be attempting to complete this challenge in one hour. Wish me luck. So first, let's start with the phonology. I suspect that this creole will develop the phonology of Colsil, but mellowed out a bit by the Latin. So let's create some sounds. Hmm. So these are the Colsil sounds, most of which correspond well with the sounds in Latin. But the uvula sound don't really fit well with Latin phonology. So let's get rid of the uvula plosives. We can also introduce gemination, a feature found in Latin, and get rid of the dark L. Our nasal sounds seem fine, but over here it might be sensible to introduce the tapped R, because whilst trilled R's are not found in Latin, they're quite common in Colso. And the tapped R is also a lot easier to learn. It might also be a good time to remove the velar fricative and this sound. In Latin, most of the vowels are either long or short. I think we could add some additional vowels to the Creole, like the Latin E. Although, I think we'll stick with Colsil's five vowels, but add these diphthongs. Actually though, because of some of these step forms, I think it would be sensible to add the palatal approximate. Now, let's move on to the phonotactics. It would be quite weird for Latin, a language with many consonant clusters, and Colsil, a language with um, very few consonant clusters, to merge into a language with open syllables. So our Creole will have quite relaxed phonotactical constraints. Since most of our vocabulary will come from Colsil, it will have very few clusters. But as the Creole develops, lots of small words will probably come together to make bigger words in a process called agglutination. So we need to make some rules. These are the consonant clusters that are allowed at the onset and these are the ones permitted at the coda. With that out of the way, we can get onto the fun part, morphology. Colsil, being the superstrate, will be the source of most of our words. So our lexicon will be Colsil words, run through our Creole's phonological and phonotactic constraints. But in reality, 
some of the meanings will change slightly based on the way the Latin speakers understand the cultural worldview and culture. So these would be good meanings for our Creole words. Due to this language being in its early stages, I don't think a morphological derivation system would have developed yet because of the probable extent of semantic drift. Now it's time for my favourite part, creating grammar and syntax. There are three major hypotheses about how the grammar of Creole languages develop. 1. The speakers of the substrates, Latin, will adopt cultural vocabulary but with grammar, the cultural have simplified to make it easier for them to understand. 2. The Latin speakers will develop a pigeon to communicate with the cultural. Then, their children will grow up learning a language without any grammatical structure. The children will then use their supposedly innate sense of universal grammar to form a Creole language. And three, the Latin speakers will just apply their own grammar to the cultural language. This has actually been observed in Creole languages around the world, and I personally think that it's the most plausible theory. However, most of these examples concern an analytical substrate and a fusional superstrate. Here, we have the opposite. Now, I think it would be extremely unnatural for the Latin speakers to continue a fusional case and verb conjugation system. And even if they did, I can't imagine the Latin speakers finding a way to conjugate verbs for the 10 pronouns, all while using Latin grammar. But what would be more natural would be for them to develop agglutinative suffixes for the colossal nouns and verbs. So these will be our verb conjugations, and these will serve as our case markers. I have only taken the most common pronouns and the most common cases to be conjugated, because unnecessary ones would probably have died off. For the syntax, I think I'll keep the Latin structure because it would be quite bizarre for the Latin speakers to actually learn Colesil's very complex word order. So now, I think I just need to draw the first 100 or so most common words. Then, I'll be done. Here are some basic sentences so you can get a taste of our Creole. Its syntax is very similar to Latin's, although notice the absence of the accusative case and the presence of agglutinative suffixes instead of fusional ones. That's all for this week. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.